I want to start off today's YouTube video by saying that I enjoy Fortnite. I've played this game for years, back before seasons even existed, and I still play it to this day. So when I make this video critiquing stuff such as Fort Nightmares and how it's just not the same anymore, it's not coming from a place of me hating the game, and it's not me wanting this game to burn in a garbage bin or anything like that, but instead it's coming from a point of, hey, I'm a passionate person who enjoys the game, and I would love to see them continue improving the Battle Royale aspect of things so that we can get events and stuff back to what they once were. Which is why in today's YouTube video, I want to talk about why Fort Nightmares has kind of gone downhill. And now I want to mention though, it's currently October 16th. If we go ahead and look at my quest menu, we can see that we have two weeks and three days left of Fort Nightmares. I've already done 20 of the 25 quests I need to do for all the rewards. In Horde Rush, I've gotten all the bonus rewards and I have two little quests here that are left. And then of course you have your weekly quests and everything else. I'm, I'm a little behind a weekly quest, I'll be completely honest here, but for the most part, I have been playing this Fort Nightmares update and enjoying it here and there. However, if I go to somewhere like the item shop, I'm not really getting a Fort Nightmares feel from this, right? I mean, if we look here, we can see, you know, we have some Survivor in Arms bundles and everything else, which released a while ago during Fort Nightmares before, or at least Rick Grimes did. But as we continue going down here, it starts to get to an area where it's like, this is Fort Nightmares? Because the Hit Squad bundle's here. And now, of course, you could say this is Fort Nightmares theme based on this whole entire variant that we have right here being the whole entire Noir variant. But of course, that is just a little thing that you could say about it if you wanted to kind of stretch it and be like, yeah, this is Fort Nightmares themed. But then we go to our daily section and now it's getting really weird. As you guys can see, we have a few emotes here. We have Ribbon Dancer, Criss Cross, Miracle Trick Shot. We have the Disco Brawl Pickaxe. We have ourselves the Tactics Officer and we have ourselves Monks where it's like, this is Fort Nightmares. This is what we're releasing right now during the time. And as you continue going down here, you have Ripley and Xenomorph as a bundle, you know, some old Fort Nightmares cosmetics returning. You have the Cause Skeleton uh, cosmetic returning, which was released in Fort Nightmares before, and then the other Cause cosmetics. Then you have a Locker bundle, okay? And then we have DC, 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 DC. I thought we were done with DC. That's why I like pause for a second there. DC, 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 and Fort Nightmares. There you go. Half of the item shop is DC. I don't know why. I don't know why they returned to the game. I don't know why they're in the item shop right now, but they are. And that is completely half of what's going on here, right? And when Fort Nightmares originally dropped, the other half of the shop was DC. And then you had icons taking up the other half. And then, you know, a few Fort Nightmares cosmetics here and there. But it's currently October 16th as the time you're making this video. And and we have one Fort Nightmares tab, two Fort Nightmares tabs, three Fort Nightmares tabs, four Fort Nightmares tabs, four different tabs of Fort Nightmares cosmetics, a lot of them being old cosmetics returning to the item shop with one brand new skin right here being Bog Stick. But of course, you know, it's interesting to see how during this whole entire time that the Fort Nightmares event has been going on to the point where we've been able to do 20 of the Fort Nightmares quests, we've only really seen some collaborations that released in Fort Nightmares return in the past, one new skin, and then a few cosmetics here and there actually returning and I mean you know a lot of people have been memeing the fact that Crackshot ended up returning to the item shop just because he has this skull shot variant a part of the cosmetics and they're even like look it's nightmare we have bog stick that's the nightmare and you know what the nightmare is right before Christmas and they were like that totally means Jack Skellington's coming to the game but of course as of right now nothing has officially happened there's been no Jack Skellington in the item shop there's been no Michael Myers in the item shop nothing along those lines and it just doesn't feel like Fort Nightmares and personally, I didn't want to make a video being like, oh, Fort Nightmares sucks this time around. So I went ahead and I went through every single Fort Nightmares we've seen throughout the years from 2017 all the way to now to figure out, has it always been this way? Or has it just somehow gotten progressively worse or lessened throughout the times that we've actually experienced Fort Nightmares added to the game? And of course, we started off all the way in 2017 when it was very Save the World focused because Save the World wasn't, you know, as different as Battle Royale in terms of popularity, but Battle Royale only really got the jack-o-launcher, pumpkin launcher, whatever you want to call it, and Halloween skins added to the item shop, and that was pretty much it. And then in 2018, that's when we started getting more and more stuff coming to Battle Royale, such as cube monsters being introduced to the game, such as the Fiend Hunter crossbow being added to the game, the six-shooter pistol being added to the game, a new LTM called Team Terror that you may or may not even remember, which was two teams that consist of 32 players, each having to fight each other for the most eliminations, similar to Team Rumble, with glider redeploy enabled, but with cube monsters monsters being scattered around the island. So it was a very interesting 32v32 mode that was basically Team Rumble with cube monsters and trying to eliminate the high score amount of people for the highest amount of points and everything, right? It was a very unique thing to see them do, and it was a very interesting LTM that 
I completely forgot about until I was working on making this video and researching here and there everything that was going on behind the scenes regarding old Fortnite stuff. On top of this, we also had Halloween props added throughout the island to give the whole entire island a more Halloween aesthetic feel, such as cobwebs being added all over the place, such as, you know, little things here and there that weren't really anything too game changing. They weren't going to be anything that really messed with the gameplay, but just made the island feel more alive by being decorated for the Halloween time instead of having one or two areas specifically about Halloween and that being it. And in 2018, we also had the Infinite's Battle Stars XP glitch, where some of the Halloween challenges were giving uh, Battle Stars instead of your normal XP, causing people to get 350 Battle Stars, aka 35 levels, entirely for free, just by doing some simple challenges, which were things such as landing at Haunted Hills, and it was a very fun time, especially for someone who didn't want to grind the game out too much, because when it happened, you know, Epic Games was just like, hey, we fixed it for anyone who actually took advantage of this, congratulations, you get to keep your prizes, you get to keep your little benefits and everything else, and it felt like such a cool little thing to be a part of, right? Because it was a whole entire thing where a lot of people were able to get dire and that type of skin a lot earlier than usual without spending any money on the game, and it was one of the first major XP glitches to really come across on the Fortnite island. And while it didn't introduce too much, it really started setting the scene for what Fortnite Mares could eventually become. In 2019, they kind of slowed it down in terms of new items, releasing the Storm King LTM, which had a winnable umbrella in it, adding the Gunfright LTM, which is a community-made LTM where four players would fight in two versus two like creative maps with each round of them having a random loadout being given but every player getting the same loadout so for example I got this shotgun right here everyone else would have that exact same shotgun as well and it was an interesting little start of everything right it was an interesting little focus where creative challenges started becoming more and more of a prevalent thing but of course around this time the rewards weren't too crazy just being a skateboarding back bling with different little designs and logos you were able to actually apply on top of it but then after that we go to four nightmares 20 2020 when things start to really kick up in terms of new content being added to Battle Royale, especially for Fortnite Nightmares. And keep in mind, after the whole 2018 Fortnite Nightmares theming, you know, with everything being themed around the Halloween time, being buildings and everything else, this happened yearly, but of course I wanted to focus on the main parts of each Fortnite Nightmares thing, instead of just being like, Halloween decorations are back, they're back again they're back once more, etc, etc. But of course, for 2020, we had Midas's Revenge, which added the Shadow Midas boss, which also had Shadow Midas's drum gun. You could argue that it's just a reskin version of Midas's drum gun, but of course, it was a nice little thing to see them adding the game regardless. Just having another one of those little drum gun SMGs, you know, around the whole entire Fortniteers theme being added for us to use. However, what was really cool was that you were able to play a Nightmare Royale version of normal Fortnite, meaning that whenever you were eliminated, you would turn into a shadow and be in a massive squad, meaning that if you manage to eliminate the final person who is alive, you could get a Nightmare Royale, regardless of the game mode you played, and get an easy, easy win, right? It was a very fun mini game to see them do. It replaced the normal Four Nightmares mode, and it was something that was just very interesting to see, right? Being able to turn into a shadow and being a part of a massive team in what was originally normal Fortnite Battle Royale was a super unique concept that I thought was really nice to see, and it was a nice little way to play on everything. On top of this, we also saw Candy added, the authority was changed to the ruins, just to, you know, have more of a Halloween theme to it. We have the Hey Boo Mega Store, we had Witch Huts added to the game, more Halloween decorations added around places. I know I said I wouldn't talk about specifics of things that got re-added over time, but this is one of the times where it's like, hey, they had more specific decorations that replaced entire buildings that were being focused around, you know, the Fortnite Mares theme and everything else. And then we also saw them add Fog, which was a very interesting thing, because it could be very very intense fog or could be very small fog over time, which just kind of shrouded the island in a very hard to see mist. This was something that was brand new at the time and, you know, it was enabled on and off beforehand and modified throughout the update and everything else, but it was an interesting little concept to see them play with. And then, of course, we got Fort Nightmares Papercraft, which was basically a website where you could print out these little 3D, like, paper figures that you could, like, glue together and everything else to have a little Fortnite minifigure that could just sit on your desk that costed nothing but printer ink. And, of course, having a printer and paper to actually use. And then for Four Nightmares 2021, this is when we start getting more and more of the final bits of, hey, this has a lot of focus to it, being Wrath of the Cube Queen, where we had Caretakers added to Horde Rush, we had the Sideways Scythe added to the game, they introduced power leveling weekends, or I guess reintroduced them to the game, which meant on the weekends you basically were able to get some extra XP, yeah, I think it was just the normal supercharged system we have now, but they had f specific weekends focused on, hey, play this weekend, get some bonus XP, and enjoy it, you know, every single weekend that you were able to actually go about and do it. 
it. It was an interesting thing to see being focused around during a Fortniteer's time, but also with this exact same update, they also reworked daily and weekly punch cards to give you more XP. Fortnite's Papercraft returned for, you know, even more Fortniteer's themed goodies that you were able to actually print out, such as mask and everything else. We had Short Nightmares, which was a little creative map where you could watch animated shorts that were all themed around like a Halloween theme. We had cosmetics being revealed via cards being flipped, which is a very interesting system. And we had quite a few cosmetics actually released least during this, you know, some that were actual variants or other cosmetics and everything else being teased as well. We also had Grizzabelle jump scares added to the game, which meant that whenever you were going to a certain area, such as an area that had a trash can or a chest, there was a chance that Grizzabelle could just pop out, out of nowhere and start attacking you. Of course, they wouldn't actually ever really eliminate you, but it would always cause you to be a little bit startled because you weren't expecting to be jump scared. And then, of course, we got Horde Rush returning once again, this time around for a massive revamp, and this time around being the first time Horde Rush had actually returned for specifically Fort Nightmares, because when Horde Rush released, it wasn't a Fort Nightmares only mode. It was something that was, you know, released as just kind of its own individual mode, and eventually ended up becoming a staple point for Fort Nightmares yearly. But from this point onwards, this is where it starts going a little bit downhill, right? And we'll talk about stuff as we get further on there. So for Fort Nightmares 2022, we had the DJ Leica, Leica or Lyrica, however you want to say their name, NPC, which would play music at the Reality Tree. Nothing too crazy there, but we also had the Howler Claw Mythics added as a part of this whole entire update. Now, the point of the Howler Claws was just to kind of be like, hey, this is something where you're able to, you know, howl around the air and see people who are nearby. It was an interesting gimmick that, you know, I would love to have seen them do more with, but it was something that was very interesting because you know it got enabled and disabled pretty quickly during the Fortniteers update and one of the controversies with the item was just how it felt like hey it wasn't even really here that much for Fortniteers being disabled for like a week or two having challenges replaced during the whole entire event and then returning for like the final few days. We also saw the zero build variant of Horde Rush being added to the game and, you know, being focused on as the staple point of the Horde Rush, being this whole entire zero build specific one. We have the Inquisitor boss, which dropped the Inquisitor's suppressed SMG. Of course, just a mythic version of the suppressed SMG we have in the game normally, but it was an interesting little boss fight because you would sit in like a little summoning circle and it would actually summon him as a mini boss. And it could also pop up in four nightmares during the whole entire zero build Horde Rush event. Now, whenever you actually summon him in zero build Horde Rush, it would make the sound and everything, but he wouldn't actually spawn, which was just kind of, you know, a way to little goof around with your friends and do your own personal jump scare. And we also had Four Nightmares NPCs such as Willow, which was an NPC that whenever you went to a very specific house in the game, would actually pop out of nowhere and chase you around with an axe trying to actually eliminate you. It felt very odd the movement that this Willow NPC had, because at least as far as I can remember personally in my own experience, it felt very human-like, the way that the Willow NPC was moving around, jumping and everything else. So it was interesting to see, and it was one of those very unique aesthetics that were added with 2022's Four Nightmares that people got to enjoy. However, when we go over now to 2023 Sport Nightmares, the one we are currently in, we gotta keep in mind that this is the second Four Nightmares that isn't officially named ever since 2021, because 2022 never had an official name, 2023 also doesn't have an official name, but 2021 was the last one that had an official name, being Wrath of the Cube Queen. And in my notes here, we have the main focus of Kato Thorn now being a vampire. And I understand that we have the whole entire time travel machine lore, chapter one, season five stuff going on, but that isn't exactly related to Fort Nightmares. That is something that is related to the build up to the next season and the end of the current season we are in, which is why I didn't mention that specifically and just mentioned that Kato Thorn is a vampire. We have the whole entire mechanics being reused, such as things where you're able to actually have the in or the health siphon from the enemy whenever you are Kato Thorn as the boss or whatever, trying to attack other people. But of course, when eliminated, they would drop Thorn's Vampiric Blade, which was basically a kinetic blade with siphon enabled on it. You know, a very small gimmick here and there that didn't really change too much, but it was an interesting thing to see nevertheless, and you know, a lot of people love the kinetic blade, so it was nice just to see it return in general. We also had Pirate Ghost pointing to buried treasure, like an actual Google image meme that you would see whenever someone was just looking up like pirates pointing or whatever else, and it was something that the chest weren't ever anything interesting, right? The chest always gave very generic loot and never felt the best, but at the same time, it was just kind of funny to see Pirate Ghost pointing off in the distance during Four Nightmares without ever really being announced too well or having much light brought to them. It was just something that kind of existed there, and it was like, oh, well, that's a thing for Four Nightmares, I guess? It's like, that, that's interesting to see. You know, it's definitely a little goofy thing that in the future, maybe I'll feel a little nostalgic on, but depending on how they continue changing Four Nightmares over the years and how they continue evolving it, but it's nothing that I would really be like, oh, this sold Four Nightmares being amazing or anything like that. 
And on top of that, we also got the wood stake shotgun. This shotgun right here, which as you can see, we can do some damage with. We can actually reload it and everything. But I have something very interesting I noticed when I was researching this video, and it's the fact that the wood stake shotgun that we use in game is a worse heavy shotgun. I'm gonna go ahead and pop an image in editing or whatever else for you to see, but in comparison to the heavy shotgun, it has the same DPS, the same damage, it has less damage at a medium range, less damage at a long range, less structure damage, a smaller range, it has less of a magazine size, it has more of a spread, and it actually has a slower reload speed. So, you know, there's a lot of stats making this a worse actual heavy shotgun, with the one benefit of it being it reloading around 0.10 seconds faster, which could be a nice little benefit to have here and there. But it was something that I didn't even really think of, right? I think the concept is really cool, you know, having this, like, vampire shotgun where you're shooting stakes out, but I didn't realize that it was basically a heavy shotgun, but worse. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how that really makes me feel about considering this a new weapon at an Fortnite because of the fact that 90% of the stats are identical to that of the heavy shotgun, it just feels like something that shouldn't exist in a way, right? It feels like it should have its own stat pool that if, you know, if I sat here and never really focused on making this video, researching all the little topics and everything, it would have been something that I would have nitpicked and, you know, even found out about. But of course, it's something that I did find out about and I thought I would mention because, you know, it kind of goes into the main point of this entire video. We also had Horde Rush returning, this time being the building enabled version because they actually accidentally added that to the game after trying to do the zero build version non-stop, you know, and releasing that one, preparing it for this update, they made a little bit of an oopsie, right? And they were like, well, the only version we can actually do is the build enabled version. So that's what we ended up getting, right? And it was a whole entire situation where zero build Horde Rush, or I guess normal Horde Rush, wasn't even enabled for half of the first day of the actual Fortnite Mares update. I mean, after the update happened and I leaked everything, I would go to sleep and I would wake up and be like, okay, so, you know, I'll probably hop on some Horde Rusher a little bit. And it still wasn't officially enabled. And then, of course, we got seven new Fortnite Mare skins, including three collaborations. Now, all the cosmetics got revealed at the very start of the whole entire update, meaning we already knew about Jack Skellington, we already knew about Alan Wake, we already knew about Michael Myers, and we already knew about all the Fortnite original skins, regardless of leaks or anything else, because Epic Games themselves made it the main focus of their blog post. Of course, we had challenges to do for XP and everything, but most of the challenges, I'm going to be completely honest, even though we had some Battle Royale ones, are focused around, hey, play creative mode, because every single week that we're getting challenges, or I guess every few days that we're getting new Fortnite Mars challenges, they all have, you know, like four or five challenges that you're able to do in the normal mode, and then it's five stages of earn XP and creative maps, earn XP and creative maps, earn XP and creative maps, right? And that is the main focus of everything, to the point where, hey, if I want to, once the next set of Fortnite Mars challenges release, I can complete the next five stages of the quest I need to do in order to obtain all the free rewards by just playing creative maps and it seems like that was a very high focus here just by mixing them in with this multi-stage challenge system so you only see one at a time instead of previously where it was like very focused on play this map now play this map now play this map and creative and everything else and it just feels kind of odd when you actually kind of focus on it and think about the fact that it is really just hey there's a major focus on playing creative but they're trying to slightly hide it under your nose and with all of that said, I know this is a very long video, what I want to mention here is that it feels like in comparison to previous years, even 2022, there's a lot less actually going on with a lot less focus towards Four Nightmares this time around, because in previous years where we've had things such as, you know, Halloween decorations add around the place, little Four Nightmares paper cuts or, you know, paper crafts you're able to use, this year we didn't even get decorations around the place. You know, you have little candy baskets over around, like, for example, Slappy Shores, but you don't have actual decorations like before, where entire areas areas would be themed with little cobwebs and spider little blow up inflatable things or whatever else in order to give it that spooky little fill. We don't have fog or anything like that. There's just nothing themed around Fort Nightmares that I'm able to see in this game other than, hey, we have a vampire Kato Thorn, two new weapons or technically new weapons and pirate ghosts that will just point at you with bad to the bone playing in the background or something, right? It is something that just feels very minimal where it just feels like, you know, in terms of quote unquote new content, Content, such as even the witch broom, all it is is old content being slightly reskinned to the point where the most innovative content I could say that released with the whole entire Fortnite Mares update would have to be the two new augments we got with this update. Which, if we go over here to the menu, it is pretty simplistic augments. Which, can we even find it in the menu now that I think about it? I don't even know. 
All right, so while making this video, I actually realized something that I didn't even notice this entire time I've been playing Fortnite, but the two augments that were related to the whole entire Fortnite MRC were actually three augments because one was for the stake uh, little shotgun right here. They're not enabled in the game. That has to be for like a weekly hotfix update or something along those lines because of the fact that, you know, they have augments planned to make Fortnite are a little bit more unique, you know, little things here that are like, oh, using the wood stake shotgun will give you siphon or using candy will give you plus and shield or using the witch broom will give you a witch broom and everything else and give you a slightly lower cooldown on using it and everything there's all these little things being planned here and there that just haven't released with fort nightmares which makes it even more of a situation where it's like is this really even a good fort nightmares update is this is this really even a fort nightmares update at all if they're going to drip feed the actual content that is supposed to be added that's supposed to be new with the update being augments that won't even be enabled for like a week or two it just feels very minimum compared to, you know, what we've seen before and compared to previous years, especially after I've recapped all the information to you guys, it really feels like this one had the least amount of love, right? We didn't really get a new mythic or a new weapon or anything like that because, you know, in similar form last year, we had like the Howler Claws and everything. That was a very unique item that actually had its own unique purposes that wasn't like anything we had seen that recently in the game. Maybe you can say it was similar to the Shadows from the whole entire Midas uh, Fort Nightmare Royale type mode or whatever but in terms of the actual just normal game or whatever it was a unique concept to see them add whereas this time around all we got was just hey here is some old items being redesigned with a red glow here is horde rush with an upgrade bench and of course here is siphon enabled on a kinetic blade and then of course hey Here's a heavy shotgun that is slightly worse. It, it just it doesn't really make sense to me, and it just feels like there isn't that much love put into this anymore. And hopefully by making this video and talking about all the different years of Fortnite Mares, talking about the current year that we're currently in for Fortnite Mares and everything else, it can start a discussion down below regarding the future of this game and regarding how Fortnite Mares could potentially improve in the future, what they could do to make everything more Halloween-y or whatever you want to say, in order to at least make it feel like Battle Royale hasn't been left on the back burner for whatever skibbity toilet UEFN map that's out there. I feel that even just having Halloween decorations in the game or re-enabling fog, you know, the stuff from old years of Fort Nightmares that you've already had in the game before would just make it have such a better aesthetic going on for it that would be more enjoyable than the current situation where we're just kind of like, well, it exists, you know, a lot of the stuff that they've added is just kind of reskins of old things, maybe they added Siphon to it, and some of the stuff isn't even enabled until a week or two after Four Nightmares has officially begun, but of course, it is just something that I really wanted to talk about and everything, and I'm passionate about, because you know, like I said, I'm not making this video to hate on the game or anything, I'm still gonna play Fortnite, I'm just making this video because, you know, every person who actively plays a game is going to have their criticisms regarding it, and they're going to want to see the company of the game they enjoy doing the best that they possibly can in order to make the experience better for them as a player so once again not hating on this i know i i want to make sure that was clear like at the start of the video but making sure it's clear at the end of the video as well because of the fact that i know some people are going to be disappointed if they didn't hear that and you know they're going to think oh fire monkey's just a hater on this game he hates fortnite he never loves it or anything else it's like i love the game i play it all the time uh recently i haven't been playing it too much because you know i haven't really found too much of an interest in playing it but i still have definitely been playing the fortnite Mares update playing some horde rush here and there and enjoying it but it's just like with all the changes and everything else they've been working on it just feels very minimum to what we could actually see them doing with four nightmares so with that said hope you champs and champions enjoyed this little bit of a rant if you did consider subscribing to support the content i create and i'll catch you guys next time with another upload peace out